Hey legends, do you have a really loud sump or did you just pick up your first aquarium with the sump? You're not sure which way to go with your sump pumps? Well in this video I'm going to run you through all the factors that you need to consider when choosing a sump pump and if you've got one that's not quite working, what you need to look out for to pick one that's going to be right for you. So let's jump straight into the video. So this saga all started because when I first picked up my eight foot aquarium and five foot sump, it was the first tank that I ever got with a sump before. It was purely by coincidence, so I did what most people probably do, and I picked out the biggest pump that I had in my fish room already, slapped that on the tank, and started to use that for my sump pump. And that just so happened to be this big boy here. This is a BioPro uh, 5,000 liters per hour big boy pump. And I was using this for water changes way, way back in the day, so I already had it on hand. This is what would be referred to as an AC pump because these days pumps also come in DC. And that's where my fabulous channel sponsors over at Aquarium Universe hooked me up and sent me this guy here, which is a DC pump, the Aquamatic DC Runner 5.3. So when choosing AC versus DC, uh, there's a couple of things. So AC typically, they're gonna be a lot cheaper to purchase DC are going to be a lot cheaper to run. AC are going to have more power and grunt, but they're also going to make a lot more noise. DC are typically going to have some adjustability in that most of the time they come with a controller these days so that you can increase or decrease the flow. For example, this um, DC Runner 5.3 here has a maximum volume the same as this at 5,000 liters per hour. However, this one here can only run at that Whereas this one here can run at 4,000 liters per hour, 3,000 liters per hour, 2,000 liters per hour, or whatever you like. So if you're the type of person that likes to build in a bit of redundancy or a build in an option to upgrade later, then DC pumps are definitely gonna be a, a bit more versatile for other applications. Now that versatility comes at a cost. Uh, this guy here, a DC pump like this one here, I think they uh, retail around about $400, although there might be a note on the screen. And this BioPro job here, uh, this one will be around about $200, so about half the price. I do have to say though, and I was, I'm not um, sort of being told to say this, this is 100% true. Uh, since setting up the DC pump on the sump, I've actually come in here and panicked a little bit because it's so quiet now, I thought that the power was out. And it's extremely disorienting when you walk into a fish room and it's silent, but the lights are still on. So you know that it hasn't been a power outage. Anyway, it's just something that I have to get used to, but incredibly, incredibly quiet. Now, I know that I'm gonna get comments when I mention uh, quietness because I got I, the same thing happened when I did my Oaza air pump review. People are going to say, well, quiet is subjective. How are we supposed to know what quiet means? And for this purpose, I went out to eBay and I picked up a decibel meter, sound level meter, so that I could actually manage, uh, measure the decibels from both of these pumps. And I think the results were pretty interesting. So when going with the decibel meter in uh, with the original uh, uh, BioPro AC pump, you can see on screen now that uh, it was quite a lot louder than what you would refer to as the ambient room noise. Now, my ambient room noise is maybe a little bit higher than others because I've got so many sponge filters bubbling, so many pumps and the dehumidifier is on as well. So my ambient is around about 50 decibels. And you can see from when I got um, you know, nearby to the sump, that number jumped up to about 80 running this pump. Now, very interesting, when I switched over to the uh, Aquamatic, the ambient noise was about the same as the room noise. So it barely jumped whatsoever, you know, around about the 50s. So um, to say that you can run a 5,000 liter per hour pump with no increase in noise, at least in my case, I think is absolutely incredible. And uh, yeah, it, it sort of backs up that point that I've come in and, and been a bit shocked at times entering the fish room. Now with that said, AC versus DC and the contributing factors to what make those have their own pros and cons, that's only one element of the conversation about which pump to choose. 
just like the conversation when it comes to heaters in your aquarium, there's people that run a giant titanium 500 watt heater. There's people that run four or five different 100 watt heaters because they like to sort of build in a level of safety in that, uh, in that sort of aquarium that one's probably more likely to cook your fish, but if one has two or three of those heaters die, then you're spreading that risk across all five of those appliances. Well, people do the same thing with sumps as well. And some people prefer to run two small sump pumps rather than one big one in case it does die because just like any other pump, they are uh, subjected to burnout and they do have issues with the impeller getting clogged up and so forth. And uh, if this is really the absolute heartbeat of your tank, so maybe if you can add two hearts into that body, then uh, you know you can mitigate your risk that way or at least limit it. So if you are gonna want to put in two pumps, then costs are gonna be a factor once those things are doubled. Also space, uh, you'll be, um, you'd be uh, really hard pressed to be able to fit two of these into an aquarium. And this is also where having the uh, controller comes into play. Because for example, if you had the capital available, you could technically pick up two of these DC runners, set the controllers for both of them at 50%. And that way you would be pumping in 5,000 liters per hour into your sump, which is your desired. But if one of them ever had an issue, needed a service or whatever it was, then you could pump up the remaining one up to 100% and you'd still be flowing the exact same amount of water through your system that um, you did when you had two pumps. So for me, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna run two pumps, then definitely DC is the way to go with the controller for that exact reason. Another thing to consider is how much water you actually wanna flow through your system. For me, I would aim for at least four to 10 times um, volume per hour. So if your system is 1000 liters, then at least 4000 to 10,000 liters per hour, I believe to be a sufficient amount. For example, me with my eight by two by two aquarium, you know, it's probably about 1400 liters or 1300 liters. And I'm happy with 5000 liters per hour as a, um, as an amount to give you a bit of a, a gauge to go off. Now, if you do have an incredibly small sump or you really want to maximize what is in the sump, you can also get transfer pumps that are going to sit outside of the sump. You'll basically have an inlet that goes in, but the pump itself will sit outside. I wouldn't recommend going this route because uh, pumps, when they sit outside of the tank, they don't have that natural water cooling aspect to them. They're going to be a lot more noisy as well. And you, you know, because the water is going to dampen it in that way. And, uh, I just find that it's a lot easier to have something that's submersible um, rather than a concentrated inlet as well that's going to get clogged up uh, and direct everything right into the impeller. Whereas you can see like this one here, for example, there's quite a big area there that things can get caught on before it causes an issue for your actual pump. Now obviously I'm showing the uh, BioPro one a lot more than the Aquamedic. That's obviously because the Aquamedic is running at the moment. I haven't disconnected it since it's been running. It's been running like an absolute dream, so I don't want to really uh, take it out for the purpose of this demonstration, especially because you know we're really just showing pumps, but um, I cannot stress enough that uh, this one here is really noisy and had a few issues sometimes with uh, getting it restarted after a power outage and uh, air getting trapped in it and things like that. So I'm by no means recommending this one. And in fact, I would recommend definitely saving up that extra couple of hundred bucks and going with, you know, something that's going to be more durable, more, uh, more versatile and um, go the distance long term. Now, there is one other consideration, and that is if you are aiming, for example, for 2000 liters per hour, do you purchase a pump that can do 2000 liters per hour or do you purchase a 4000 liter per hour pump and run it at 50 percent using the controller? Now, I would personally recommend the latter because running it at 50% is going to mean that you're going to most likely get more longevity out of that pump because it's not working at full capacity. You know, it, if you imagine like a car, you don't have the, the pedal planted to the floor 100% of the time. You're sort of idling, cruising along at, um, you know, at, at 3,000, 4,000 revolutions. So um, I'd, I'd recommend going something that's bigger 
I'm running it at a 50%. And uh, since I pretty much am recommending at this point, DC pumps, that's the way to go, I believe. So there you go guys, I hope that has helped to inform your decision making process as to what uh, sump pump you wish to go with. I've been really, really happy since setting up my Aquamatic DC pump. And thanks heaps to Aquarium Universe for sending it out to me. If you do want one for yourself or any other in their range of sump pumps, you can get 10% off using my code Blake's Aquatics at um, checkout. Otherwise, it's always linked in the description of every video, so go and check them out. Other than that, if this video has helped you out, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.